just going to go live here because <laughs> my countdown timer is not working. So let's just do live and off the cuff without my three minute countdown. I'm a few minutes late anyway. So hello. Welcome to Live with the Paper Pixie, episode 271. I'm Julie DiMatteo, the Paper Pixie, coming to you live from Alpharetta, Georgia. As you're rolling on in, say hello and where you're watching from, those of you watching live, and hello to my replay watchers. I'm a little frazzled tonight, as you can probably tell by the background, but I've got three Easter projects for you tonight using the Easter Bunny Bundle. Now, I did check the inventory status report. It is still in stock. I do have some fear that it might sell out before Easter, so I wanted to get some Easter projects in with you guys. I've got a fun fold card and two quick and easy 3D boxes. So let me get situated really quickly because I forgot to move my um, foot pad. Hold on. I love when technology doesn't always work. So um, let's see, I'm gonna put lotion on because that's what I usually do during the countdown. I hope you guys are having a wonderful and blessed week. A couple of quick personal updates and I will be sure to add chapters to this so those of you watching the replay can jump to the good stuff. But um, I was a little delayed in getting my project sheets up from last week. I anticipated to do it by Thursday. And I got a phone call from the school nurse on Thursday that Nolan had taken a tumble on the playground and it hit his back. Anyways, it was like 15 minutes before the cutoff for pickup. You got to check your kids out early. So um, I, she's like, are you okay with him riding home on the bus? I said, well, what do you think? And she goes, well, he doesn't usually complain. So anyways, I'm like, I can be there in less than 10 minutes. So I zipped over there. She was waiting for me at the front of the school. I took one look at him and he was sweaty and pale and a little bit shaking. He had hit his back pretty hard. I thought, okay, I think we probably need to go take you to urgent care. So I called Brian, he met us there. Urgent care took one look at his back. He had developed a large hematoma where he hit his back and they sent us directly to the children's emergency room. So from, we were there what, from two until 10 p.m. It was a long day. Um, everything checked out fine. Nolan is fine. He did fracture a rib um, and had a contusion. That's what the um, uh, uh, the hematoma was from. He also had a little bit of blood on his lung, but they ran CAT scan, chest x-ray, blood work. We thought at one point we were going to have to spend the night. So it was a scary, scary six hours for sure. So I took Friday off. Nolan stayed home with me from school and snuggled on the couch with Kona. And he's good. We are counting our blessings. Whew, that was scary. So almost 10 years we made it without having to go to the children's emergency room. But if I were to predict which child it would have been, it would have been Nolan. So that's the scoop. Um, everything is good. I'm excited about tonight's projects. Brian, are you ready for your cameo here? Brian is watching for your questions and comments tonight to help me here. If you do have a question as I demonstrate tonight's projects, please put a Q colon in front of that question. I'm gonna save your questions for the end during the Q&A segment. That allows me to focus on tonight's projects without getting too distracted. Um, and let's see, when you shop with me, you earn Pixie Perks on orders of $25 or more. Pixie Perks are my way of recognizing my loyal customers. When you get 10 Pixie Perks stars, you earn a free stamp set of your choice. You can save those Pixie Perks rewards and redeem for a stamp and die bundle up to $54 as well. I love to give back to my customers for their loyal business. So we are in the midst of celebration. Today is month number two. Celebration ends on February 28th. And today Stampin' Up! added 10 new freebies as choices. There's nine for level one, which is a free with $50 purchase and one for level two, which is a free with a $100 purchase. These are current catalog products, um, a combination of things from both the annual catalog and the mini catalog. The level two is the Eden's Garden Bundle. That one's easy to remember. The level one freebies that they added are things like ribbon, there's embossing folders, kits. There's two punches on there, which is a fantastic deal 
for free with a $50 order. There's a, um, the Enjoy Life, I think. It's that designer series paper. I love that paper, by the way. So give that a second look. Um, you've got additional things. If you've already got what you wanted during January, you got some new stuff to look at during February. So that's the scoop there. I do want to tell you to stay online uh, about, um, or sorry, stay till the end because I do have a quick announcement for you, but I don't want to tell you till the end because I want you to stay here. So stay tuned. We'll do that right after the Q&A. All right. Now I do have, oh, I forgot to tell you. So during celebration, in addition to free with $100 and $50 and $100 purchases, there's also a great join offer. You can get $175 in product uh, for $99 or you can get $175 in product plus the mini stamp and cut and emboss machine in either white or boho blue. If you're interested in grabbing that deal, it's like $109 in free product for the one with the mini machine. Uh, the paperpixie.com slash join. You get to pick what you add to your starter kit and it comes with all the perks like pre-order, discount, uh, community, all kinds of things. And today is actually a pre-order day. It's a demonstrator perk. We've got some online exclusive products that will be available to you March 1st. Demonstrators get to pre-order a selection of those products starting today, which means you can also add those to a starter kit. So take a look for that as well. We all good? I'm not sure what she needs. Okay. Um, show and tell. Look at this mess on my desk, you guys. <laughs> I was like, oh, I've got time to do a template. No, I do not. Um, so we're gonna be cutting paper on the fly tonight. I'll be a little bit frazzled and all over the place. Um, I do have a show and tell from Nolan, okay? He's got a Lego set for sure. I'm gonna need those measurements. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't get the full description here of what this is, but um, he's got, I don't know, it looks like a snowman maybe? a little coffee thing. I should have asked him what it was, but some fun stuff. He was excited to show you guys that tonight. So he still has the Lego in him, even though he's got a fractured rib. So he's going to bounce back really quickly. So, all right, let me show you tonight's projects. If I can find them all. There we go. All right. So we have a little gift bag and inside I have in this one, a Russell Stover egg marshmallow. Now, I gotta tell a little funny here. I was running late with coming up with project ideas, and once I got going, I couldn't stop, but I had to go find some Easter candy. And I went to, where did I go? I went to Publix, no, no joy there. I went to Walmart, no joy there. I went to Target, still Valentine's Day out. And I knew because I had to fill a prescription for Nolan at CVS that they had some Easter stuff. So that's where I ended up. I should have just gone there first. But so um, a Russell Stover egg. The other one that will fit, and I haven't seen this before, but the milk chocolate covered marshmallow peeps. So that will fit in here as well. These are about the same size and I've got a uh, dimensional backing stuck there because of the hot mess behind me. And then in this one, I have a Cadbury egg. I'm gonna leave that intact for now. Actually, that one I don't have a Cadbury egg. I have a Reese's peanut butter egg, but it will also hold a Cadbury egg. And it's just this cute, quick and easy little gift box. And this is using the Dandy Designs paper, which I am loving for Easter. And then we've got a pocket card. I've done one of these before, but a little bit of a different, um, I put it together differently with different measurements. So it's just got a three and a half by five piece in there. And the only thing holding the pocket together is just the ribbon tied around the center. But I kind of love those little floral, now I forget what they're called. It's sort of a little, it looks like the bunny's got a flower around his neck. So his or her neck, right? Do we know if the Easter Bunny is a boy or a girl? <laughs> so that's what we're making tonight. Let's see. I think we're going to start with, let's do the gift bag first. Um, I do have a template for the gift bag. I do not have a template for the other projects, but they will be in project sheets. And give me till Friday to do those project sheets. I'll have three separate ones for you. If you're looking for last week's project sheets, they are linked in the video description of last week's episode, episode 270. Um, I did separate those. So there's one for the fun fold, which was the envelope flap fold, and one for the 
Andy's snap bar wrapper. <laughs> so, all right. Let's see. Oh yeah, the paper's over here. I think, maybe. So for this project, the gift bag project, we need a piece of designer series paper that measures six inches by nine inches, okay? Um, so you can get actually only two of these out of a sheet of 12 by 12, but if you take your 12 by 12 and cut it to a nine inch section, so you'll basically be cutting away a three inch by 12 inch piece of paper, then um, that you can save that for other projects and you'll have two pieces that are nine by six. So let me bring in the template here. I love little gift bags like this because they're so easy to make. We're gonna start on the nine inch side and I'm gonna score this at three and a quarter, four and a quarter, seven and a half, and eight and a half. I'm doing these measurements from memory tonight. <laughs> then I'm rotated it clockwise. Okay, so let me repeat those again. Three and a quarter, four and a quarter, seven and a half, eight and a half. Rotating it clockwise. It's just easier for my brain to remember. Then we're gonna score at one inch and four and five eighths. Okay, so one and four and five eighths. You guys are awesome. Anybody that's new here, say hello in the chat. The community will welcome you. All of my supplies are behind me. Um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold and burnish on all the score lines. This was hard to pick which side of the paper because I love this back side too. This is the Dandy Designs, which is free with a $100 purchase. I do find that folding and burnishing before you cut makes it easier to see your score lines. And it's just easier to do that when the paper's still intact. So here's the only template I've got for you today, but the other projects are fairly straightforward. So with the three and a quarter inch section here along the side, actually, I'm gonna turn it upside down. We're gonna do the top part first. Um, actually, and I'm going to, for me, I like to flip it over because uh, it's easier for me to see the score line. So if we're going this way, I'm going to cut up this vertical score line, the first one from the right, and then we're going to remove this whole section here, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and cut up that vertical score line, stopping at the first horizontal score line, okay? And then we're going to remove this whole section. Now, if that is too long of a journey for you to take with your scissors, go ahead and use your paper trimmer to make really quick work of that. So we're removing that. Yes, it's got score lines, but you might be able to get something out of that scrap that's left. Okay, so coming on back here done the top part. The next thing I'm gonna do is cut up each of the vertical score lines along the bottom, stopping at the first horizontal score line. And again, I like to look at the back side. It all, all, sometimes it depends on the pattern of the paper as well. Sometimes one side's easier to see the score lines than the other. All right, so then what I'm gonna do is actually remove this lower rectangle corner here. And then I like to come in and just miter cut slightly. And I'm just cutting, when I say miter cut, I'm just cutting a little bit of an angle there. And then I'm gonna miter cut just a little sliver there at the top of this tab section. I'm gonna fold the big sections out of the way to sort of isolate those tabs. And I'm gonna come in and miter cut those as well. All right, so there is that, okay? Remove that whole section in this lower corner, okay? This is really easy. And I love the measurement, nine by six. All right, I'm gonna bring in the detailed trio punch. It's obviously retired, but um, I just grab a corner rounder. I keep hoping they're gonna come back with a corner 
rounding punch. So I'm just gonna go ahead and round the corners of that top flap. And I do like to fold this out of the way so I've got that flat edge there, like so. That just gives it a nicer finish, okay? All right, I'm gonna flip this back over. I'm turning around, all my stuff is back here. I'm grabbing liquid glue and I'm gonna fold. So this is the back side of our gift bag. I'm gonna fold on the second score line from the left and I'm gonna put glue just right along that little half inch tab there. Like so, okay. Then I'm gonna fold on the first score line from the right and just press that flat using our score lines to do all the work for us. like so. Sometimes I like to kind of switch the score line, just kind of zigzag like this, just to make sure that everything's all lined up. All right, so we're looking like this. Then I'm gonna flip it over. So the side that does not have the flap, the flap is gonna be on the back. I'm gonna go ahead and fold that outwards, just so I can reach that better with glue. I'm gonna put the two tabs in and put liquid glue on each tab just to kind of keep those into place. Not totally necessary. And then liquid glue on this front flap. Okay, I do like to kind of pre uh, put this down on my surface so I've got a little bit of leverage. We're gonna fold the back flap over those tabs and then the front flap. I like to turn it and just use my fingers to kind of square up those edges. And we're gonna use our glue bottle as a tool here, which I love to do. I do recommend putting the lid back on just in case you've got a full glue bottle. And we're gonna use that just to press from the inside. And that's just pushing down those little tabs, like so. So that's the basics of the box there. Let's grab the treat. Let's do the peeps this time, okay? I do kind of like to move the wrapper a little bit out of the way. I sized this, now let me tell you the measurements really quickly, because I'm sure you'll find other things for it to hold. It's three and a quarter inches wide by three and five eighths inch tall, but remember it's gonna taper a little bit here at the top, and then one inch in depth. So three and a quarter, three and five eighths by one. We're gonna put our peep in there, kinda fold that wrapper down and then I'm just putting my fingers on either side kind of pinching I'm not doing any score lines for that the paper will naturally kind of pinch I love the way that that looks on the side and then we can just kind of fold the flap down I'm using my belly as a third hand here like so so that is the basics of it now I'm going to use a velcro dot to hold that together these are listed on my favorites page the paperpixie.com slash favorites and um, they are the 5 8 of an inch thin clear fasteners. I love the thin ones because they don't add a lot of bulk. So I've already sandwiched together the hooks and the loops. I'm just going to free one of them. Just add to my mess back there. I'm going to pull the backing off of the hook side, which is the side that's a little bit more clear. So we've got a clear side and we've got an opaque side. I'm hoping you can see that on the camera. Kind of hard to show. Pulling the backing off the clear side. And I'm gonna stick that to the back side of the flap. Just like that. And I'll pull the backing off of the loop side or fuzzier, softer, more opaque side. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pinch this closed skin. I'm using my belly as a third hand. Pressing that into place. I do like to open it again and just press those Velcro dots make sure they're good and adhered like that so cute i've done a couple uh, boxes that are a couple gift bags that are like this i don't think i've done this size yet though so i kind of love i don't know i love the size of that it's what i was dreaming about this morning a gift box that looked like this so i'm going to bring in the easter bunny bundle and show you that It is a punch bundle, and again, um, I have a feeling this is gonna be uber popular because this punch is 
to die for. It's the Easter Bunny Punch. There's a stamp set that goes with it and those bunnies are so stinking cute. What I love about this is it's not just for Easter. You've got your friend like no other. Enjoy all the little moments. Hi, and it's a new day. Um, so really, really cute. Now this would go really well with the carrot set that's in celebration. It's another option for a freebie. And then the Easter Bunny Punch, I love because it's great on its own. You don't need to stamp the bunny. This is the only one that gets punched out. You don't need to stamp it. I'm doing two of the projects tonight without stamping the bunny and one with, but oh, everything is so cute. So I'm gonna go ahead and, what am I gonna do first? I'm gonna stamp first onto Fresh Freesia. So Fresh Freesia cardstock and Fresh Freesia ink. And we're doing the sentiment and Easter treat for you. Go ahead and do that. You can kind of see that I've used my Fresh Freesia a lot. So the ink is um, kind of sparse in the middle or sparse in the middle. So I'm kind of stamping on the edges there. I do need to re-ink that. I'm just gonna go ahead and Stamp that about here. It's just a scrap piece of fresh freesia. Bringing in the Easter Bunny bundle. Now you could also stamp it. If you're gonna do a whole bunch of these, you could punch a bunch of bunnies and because it's a photopolymer stamp set, you can stamp after the fact as well, which is actually what I did for the sample. Try to get that centered. What I'm trying to do here is line up the flat edge of the back foot with the sentiment itself, just so it looks like it's straight, like so. But how cute is that? Oh my gosh, I love it. Now your bunny could go either way. I did learn like when I was trying to work on my new brand lo logo that it's always better for things to face the right um, because for some reason when they face the left, they look like they're leaving versus coming. I'm not sure. There's some um, philosophy around it. So we're going to stick with the Easter Bunny facing to the right. <laughs> and then this doesn't look, well, this is not from the basics twine. I cannot find mine, but this is what is in there. It's just a smaller roll of it, but this is just white baker's twine. I'm going to go ahead and tie a little bow around our Easter bunny. You could also just tie a bow and adhere one with a glue dot. I do need my reverse tweezers for this though. So I'm going to go ahead and tie a bow around his neck. I love the white on the fresh freesia. So, all right, so the, the tweezers, I've got those linked on my favorites page as well. I just use those as a third hand. And it's gonna actually lift the Easter Bunny off my desktop, but that's fine for me to just get the bow going. It just holds the center so it doesn't come unraveled while I'm working on the bow. There we go. And then once you get the loops pulled through, you can just remove your reverse tweezers. Now I'm just gonna zhuzh a bit and make sure that knot is tight. Again, this is one of those things, if you're doing a whole bunch of these, you probably want to do just the regular air bows <laughs> versus, you know, just tying bows in the air versus tying them on the cardstock. It'll go a lot faster for you. Just a little tip there. I'm pulling the tails down so that I can cut them at the same time and they'll be the same length. Like that, but oh my gosh, so cute. That little bow on our bunny. Right, all right. A trio of dimensionals on the back of this guy. And we'll pop him up on the front. Kind of going in the center here. And I thought he's really cute with a little eye. So I've got the iridescent pearls and I'm just gonna grab one of the small ones. And 
and I just thought that was cute. Add a little bit of a pearl there, but such a simple but quick and easy treat holder there for Easter. And of course, um, I don't think it'll fit a gift card, but let me check for you. You can, eh, I don't think you'll be able to get a gift card in there unless your gift card kind of bends. <laughs> it'll fit tall ways, but I think that that taper is gonna give you some trouble, so. Anyways, I know that question's coming tonight, so. <laughs> so there we go, that's project number one. We've got an Easter bunny treat bag, size to fit, again, the Peeps uh, chocolate-covered marshmallow or the, let me show you both treats again, the Russell Stover. This is the bigger one. I've got a project for the smaller Russell Stover marshmallow egg. Um, this is the one that's the 30% more, I think is what that says. Yeah, 30% more, so it's a good-sized egg, or this Peeps. They're both about the same size. Um, now, packaging may vary slightly depending on how they've heat-sealed it or how much air they've put in it, but you should still be able to get your treats in this really sweet gift bag. So let me go ahead and close those up here. All right, so there we go. Super cute, I love the purple or fresh freesia Easter bunny there. All right, let's move on to the box. Now this one I'm gonna have to cut cardstock as well. Let me look at my notes. Sorry, dear. All right. For the base, you're gonna be able to get four of these out of a sheet of um, eight and a half by 11. We're gonna cut this to four and one eighth by four and three quarters. There's that. And then I've got this really cute Fresh Freesia gingham pattern. This is gonna be for the lid. And we wanna cut this one to, now this might already be cut, three. Okay, so three and seven sixteenths, which is one sixteenth less than three and a half by four and one sixteenth. So that's just one sixteenth past. I'll show ya. So you go to the four, and then you go to one more tick mark. That's four and one sixteenth. So three and seven sixteenths by four and one sixteenth. All right, let's start with the base. These are really easy. Once you get the um, cardstock and the DSP cut, the scoring is super easy to remember. So for the box base, we're gonna score. You just have to remember one measurement for the scoring, and that is one and three eighths on all four sides. This is a great box for things other than the um, Cadbury eggs or the Reese's peanut butter eggs. It's just a cute little size. You could fill it with M&Ms, couple Hershey's Kisses. So then the designer series paper, and again, this is Dandy Designs, which is free with a $100 order. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and just score this at one inch on all four sides. So for the base, it's one and three eighths on all sides. And for the lid, it's one inch on all four sides. I just rotate it and score, rotate it and score, and so on like that. Now I don't have templates for this one, but I will on the project sheet. Both of these pieces go together the same way. The only difference with the base is that we're gonna trim off a little bit of the bulk. So I'll show you that live. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fold, whoops, fold and burnish on all the score lines of both pieces while we're at it. All right, so paper snips. I've got both of these. We're looking at the back side here because it's easier to see. I'm gonna move this over here for right now. Um, easier to see the score lines, okay? So um, let me put the lid to the side for now. Let's focus on the base. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut up each of the vertical score lines, stopping at that first horizontal score line. And I'm just cutting right down the middle. Right down the middle of the score line. Let me clarify that. 
And I'm going to rotate it 180 and we'll do the same thing here. Now we do need to remove a little bit of the bulk here. I like to do it with the paper trimmer. But you can also just eyeball it. So this center section is two inches wide and these are one and three eighths. So when you go to fold those in, you'll see that they're gonna overlap. So we're gonna go ahead and remove that overlap. I'm gonna line up, so what I did was I folded that bigger section underneath. This fold, I'm gonna line up at the one inch mark to the left of the cutting groove. That is the fourth vertical score line here. So I'm just gonna do that and just trim away. I think it's like three eighths of an inch that we're trimming off. You can go a little bit more if you want to. I'm gonna turn it around and do the same thing. Fold that big section out of the way. Line up the fold at one inch and cut just to get rid of some bulk, okay? All right, so with that big section folded out of the way, let's come in and miter cut those tabs. There's a few miter cut pieces on the workspace behind me. Uh, I like to make a mess when I design. All right, same thing on the other side, fold the big section out of the way. And you can see my bag of treats back there too. Well, you probably can't see it right now with the picture in picture, but I did get some more treats. All right, so get these out of the way. So now what we're gonna do with liquid glue is I'm gonna go ahead and start with one tab at a time. We're gonna line up this folded edge with, or sorry, this score line or fold with this cut edge. So we're gonna go like this to start to form our box corners. So liquid glue. I love liquid glue for this because it lets you get things lined up just where you want it. Again, I'm just trying to make that line up as best I can with the fold and that cut edge. Then just work your way around and repeat on the remaining tabs. All right, that's that one. Again, liquid glue, I can kind of slide things into place. And then you'll see there that those are not overlapping. They're just touching. And that's what we want it to do. If you do have the overlap, sometimes what can happen is the lid is not going to fit because you got that extra bulk there. Okay, like that. And then the last one, this one's always a little bit tricky to get inside the box. Just gently kind of pull the side out to then tuck that in. Like so. All right, so let me show you what'll fit. We've got a Cadbury cream egg. These will both fit on their side. So there's that guy. And then these are just slightly bigger. I've not had one of these before. Cadbury eggs are like my favorite Easter candy. But then we've got the Reese's peanut butter egg. Okay, so both of those fit. I'm gonna leave one of them in there. I told the kids I would share the Reese's peanut butter egg, but not the Cadbury eggs. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're gonna work on the lid now. Same thing, I've got it in landscape. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up the vertical score lines, stopping at the first horizontal score line. Like so, okay. I'm gonna rotate it 180 and repeat. This is gonna go together the exact same way, only we don't need to remove the bulk. So it'll go a lot faster. So I'm folding that big section out of the way Coming on in and miter cutting. There we go. Like so. Turn it 180 and repeat. Fold the big guy out of the way. So get these 
out of the way. And then this will assemble the same way. So again, we're gonna line up that score line with this cut edge. Liquid glue here. And form our box corner. guys talking about Cadbury eggs. I love it. <laughs> All right, so again, we're just working our way around. Basically taking the glue right up to the score line there. I love this pattern. Super cute for Easter. It's so funny, when I first saw the Dandy Designs paper, I didn't think Easter, but wow, is it perfect for Easter. And then the last guy there. And you'll see that they don't quite overlap, so there was no need to remove the bulk. Now it's time to hold our breaths and figure out if the lid's going to fit. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> we cut it so that it would, so now it should be a nice fit. Not too tight, not too loose, but I love how there's that little bit of the box base peeking through. It's about three eighths of an inch. How cute is that? So obviously this box could be used for so many fun things. Again, like a handful of M&Ms, Hershey's Kisses, Hershey's Nuggets. It's just a cute little sized box. The measurements of this one are two inches by one and, th one and three eighths by one and three eighths. Okay, really, really cute. Now the lid's obviously just slightly bigger than that, but the, the usable dimensions are two by one and three eighths by one and three eighths. So what I wanted to do was to add a little bit more than just the Easter Bunny to this. So I'm grabbing the white crinkled seam binding, which I'm laughing at myself because I'm at the tail end of this. This is the end of the roll. So praying that this will still work for tonight's projects, but I love the crinkled seam binding. It doesn't add any bulk. It's really easy to tie bows and it just adds a little something because it's the it's seam binding. It's got a little bit of a shimmer look to it. It's not sparkly, but that shine of seam binding. So again, I'm gonna grab my reverse tweezers here. And we're gonna go ahead and tie a bow over the outside of the box. This is totally not required to keep the box together. Just something fun to add to it. A little extra embellishment here. So I'm using my reverse tweezers to hold that knot. And then we can focus on our bow. And again, this uh, crinkled seam binding is very forgiving when it comes to bows. If I can get it to work here. that loop behind the first loop. There we go. And pull. All right. And then once you pull that knot tight, the crinkled seam binding just like <coughs> magically gives you a beautiful bow. One of the reasons why I love working with the seam binding, especially this width. This is, uh, let's see, a quarter of an inch. So it's a really nice width, especially for smaller projects. Now I can just slide that into the center there. We'll trim off the ends and hope we've got enough for the card because it's kind of essential for the card. All right. So cute just as it is, right? But then why don't we add the Easter Bunny to it? And I'm gonna switch it up on this one. I did Blackberry Bliss on the sample, but I actually like, it just was a little bit too bold for me. So I'm gonna use um, Fresh Freesia again. And then the sentiment, you're a friend like no other. Just on a scrap piece of basic white here. There we go. Love that purple. Fresh Freesia is one of my favorites next to Highland Heather of purples. Purple's my favorite color, so. And then we'll bring in our Easter Bunny. Like 
so. And I can never remember the name of these, so let me look them up. They're in the annual catalog. We've had them for a little while, but I love, love, love the colors in it. It is the Loose Flower Flourishes, and they come in um, two different sizes. Is that right? I don't know. It's 60 pieces, but Polished Pink, Pale Papaya, and Fresh Freesia. So perfect for the Dandy Designs paper. Um, but you'll find them on page 143 of the annual catalog. I'm just going to take a mini glue dot and the Fresh Freesia one. I like, I don't know, I just, there's something about the, um, it just looks like a little flower around the bunny's neck, which is cute. So I just stuck the flower flourish, the flourish, <laughs> to a glue dot as it runs away from me. Just gonna pick it up with my take your pick tool. I don't know, I'm just kind of putting it there. This is totally optional, um, but I do also like adding another one of the iridescent pearls as an eye. I don't know, just thought it was cute. Also optional. Everybody kind of has their own version of what bunnies look like, right? Sometimes it's hard to figure out where to put their eye. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to basically place that bunny. He's kind of a perfect size for this treat box. Yes, he's taller, but he looks cute here on the front. But I only want to put dimensionals along the top part of his body here because we don't want to stick him to the box base here. So let me grab a pair of dimensionals here. And again, just gonna focus on putting just those two on sort of the top half of his body. And before you stick it down, just pay attention to where your tails are on the ribbon. You can always fix it if you need to. And then I'm just going to, I wanna make sure that his feet don't go past the box base so it stands up okay, like that, okay? And then you'll have no problem sliding the lid off because that bunny is not sticking to the box base. So there's project number two. Super cute. Love that bunny. All right, let's go move on to the pocket card, which is so, so easy. So this, we're gonna start with just a quarter sheet of cardstock. Again, you can get four of these out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11. We're gonna cut this to four and a quarter by five and a half. And I'll show you, that's just a quarter sheet. So if we were to take the other piece and just cut that to five and a half, you will have four bases to start with, okay? Now, the next piece we want to do, this is designer series paper. We're gonna cut it to four inches by 10 and a half. Now, if you're like me and you're too lazy to open the arm, I'm just gonna remove an inch and a half. That's 12 minus an inch and a half leaves us with 10 and a half inches. So the inch and a half mark is here on the right side. I'm just gonna go ahead and line it right up to the end of the white space there and cut. You can sa Whoops, you can save this piece, inch and a half by four for another project. So we've got a piece that measures four by 10 and a half. Now for this one, reading my measurements here, we're gonna go ahead and score. I've got the pattern that I want to be on the outside. Okay, we're gonna first score at five and a quarter. But then I'm gonna flip, really doesn't matter, but I do like to be particular with my score lines. So we did five and a quarter on this side. I'm gonna flip and do nine and a quarter. Is that right? Inch and a quarter, yes. Okay, so five and a quarter and nine and a quarter. So five and a quarter on this side, nine and a quarter there, okay?
And the next piece we need, if you don't already have a bunch of these cut ahead of time, is three and three quarters by five. This will be our little card insert. You can get th four of these out of a sheet of eight and a half by 11 with some to spare, which are great for sentiments. So three and three quarters by five. All right, so we've got our card base that is four and a quarter by five and a half. We've got this piece, which is three and three quarters by five. And then we have a piece of designer series paper that measures four by 10 and a half, scored at five and a quarter and nine and a quarter, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and this top smaller score line, I'm gonna fold backwards and burnish. And this one I'm gonna fold forwards or basically turning that valley score line into a mountain fold and burnish. So I think you can kind of see how this is coming together. There are a number of different ways you could do this, but you'll see that there's not a lot of space on either side to sort of seal this pocket, but this is the basics of how this is going to go. It kind of looks like a bed to me with a, with a sham and, what is it called a sham? No, a duvet. Sham is a pillow cover, <laughs> but super cute. You can have fun picking a designer series paper that you like both sides of. So the first thing I'm gonna do, because I want the flap to kind of stay put, is I'm going to take liquid glue and just glue that down. I'm at the end of my glue bottle here. Is it the one, is this the one I was using? <laughs> now it magically doesn't want to work. There we go, whoops way too much. I'm gonna smooth that out a bit. All right, fold that backwards. Like so, okay. All right, so I'm rubbing the glue on my finger to get rid of the boogers, the glue boogers. All right, so that's what your dress is for too. Then I'm gonna come in with that ribbon the crinkled seam binding ribbon, okay? Oh, now I'm super sticky. It happens to the best of us, the stickiness. All right, before we adhere this to the card base, I'm gonna come in and, oh, this is gonna be tight. Let's see, I still got a little more on the roll. There we go, all right. We're not gonna adhere the sides here. I'm just gonna use my ribbon to tie around this folded back section, okay? You do wanna make sure that your ribbon is flat on the back, that there aren't any twists. And this seam binding ribbon is great for this because there's not gonna be a lot of bulk when we adhere it to the card base here. So I'm just making sure I've got enough of a tail over here. We've got just enough of the, the seam binding for tonight, yay. Thank you. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and grab my tweezers which are right in front of me and tie a bow. This one will mail just fine because there's not a lot of bulk. Um, sort of depends on if you add the flourishing flower or not. I'm not saying that right but um, that will add a little bit of bulk and make it hard to go through the post office machine. So I would actually recommend not adding that if you're going to mail it or, you know, pay for extra postage and use the extra padding for it because it's pretty thick. All right, so got that, got our bow. Trim the tails. Look at that, I had a little bit left. <laughs> okay, so we've got the bow. You wanna make sure you get your knot where you want it and I do kind of want it off to the left. I'm gonna go ahead and use liquid glue and we're gonna adhere this to the bottom here. Now this was a question from last week. When do you decide when you just add glue around the edges versus a little squiggle in the middle? This is one I'll put a little squiggle in the middle just to keep that ribbon in place like so. So liquid glue, slide that layer into place and just take your time, you've got you know, the bow or the ribbons in a, your way just a little bit. So just work your way around, pressing it into place. If you want to, you could kind of do it flat this way and press. 
like that. So that is the basics of this pocket fold card. And then we've got our insert piece that's gonna just slip in there. Now you can see that it can pop out from the edge, but because we've got that bow up fairly high, it's not gonna fall out in the mail or for the recipient. So there's no need to add adhesive on lo along the sides if you don't want to. You really don't have space to do that, okay? But let's go ahead and stamp. Now I'm gonna leave this in the pocket and stamp because we've got, it's a photopolymer stamp set and I'm gonna make sure that Happy Easter sentiment goes in the spot I want it to. So we've got Happy Easter from the Easter Bunny set and where did I put my ink pad? Fresh Freesia again. Make sure my sentiment's not upside down. Again, I'm inking up on the edges here because the ink is out of the middle. And I'm just gonna go ahead and stamp. Super cute, quick and easy. I love that with the matching color. Actually, I'm gonna leave this out. Got a scrap of fresh freesia. I'm gonna stamp the bunny so you can see what he or she looks like. Tone on tone here for just a little bit of texture. So, so cute. Oh, you know what's so funny? I did it on white for this. I think it needs to be white. <laughs> Didn't feel right for this tone on tone for some reason, but I'm gonna show you both. You guys can decide which one you like better. I like the pop of white, I think, on this background. But we'll punch them both out. I'll line it up and punch. We'll do this guy too. I think white's gonna be the one here. Yeah, that's the white. And then there's the purple. I don't know, Brian, what do you think? You like the purple. Oh, you like the white. <laughs> Sometimes I have to translate what Brian means. Oh, that would be very cute, Mary in Boston. White on Fresh Freesia, cute. We're gonna go with white for tonight so we can get to your questions. But you got options. I love how this Easter Bunny works great on its own, the Easter Bunny Punch, or with the stamp set. So again, you have an option whether or not you want to add the flourish. I'm gonna not add it to this one, but I'm just gonna show you what it looks like. I grabbed the pale papaya one because that does match the designer series paper, and that would be cute like that. Just a little added embellishment, but he's cute without it as well. So there, that is project number three with the Easter Bunny Bundle. Let me show you all three of them again. Got this one and this one. Cute, 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 super fun. So project sheets, I'll get up by Friday, if not by tomorrow. My goal will be tomorrow, but I may need till Friday. I've got a bunch of calls back to back tomorrow and an appointment at lunchtime. So um, these are so fun. I love the versatility of the Easter Bunny bundle. Punch is great on its own, but also paired with the stamp set, which you can get bundled together at a 10% discount. So let's go ahead and jump into tonight's Q&A. Let me get that teed up for you. And then reminder to stay on till the end, I got a quick announcement for you. Oh, thank you, Pam. He's doing so much better. He's got good spirits. He was in good spirits all day. The only thing he was upset about was um, the IV and then they tried to draw blood with the IV and that didn't go so well. So they had to stick him in the other arm and he, big crocodile tears. This is the worst day ever. And I was like, oh, break my heart. I'm like, if you think this is the worst day, <laughs> it's all about perspective, right? But he was such a good sport. And what did they give him? Hydrocodone 
um, for the pain. He was just like living large with the TV on. We were watching Disney Plus and um, he's doing much better though. So thank you for asking. Oh, thank you, Myrtle. Thank you, thank you. I love my team members. Y'all are so sweet. Have I heard anything about the stamp mist degrading our photopolymer stamps? I have not heard that, Becky. I have heard that about the stays on cleaner. So that might be, you might be mixing it up with that. The stays on cleaner is like a solvent cleaner. And if left on the photopolymer will degrade the stamps. I have not had experience with it. I use stamp and mist all the time on photopolymer. Um, but I do occasionally wash my photopolymer stamps just using dish liquid and um, cool water. Um, that sometimes bring, brings the sticky back if needed because what happens is paper fibers and oils from our hands get on the photopolymer and can affect how sticky they are on the clear blocks or the stamparatus. Usually a trip through um, some dish soap and water and rinse it really well and let it air dry on a lint-free cloth should bring some of the um, stickiness back. Let's see. Great question, Michelle. If you order over $150, do you qualify for both level one and two free? So yes, if you order $150, for example, you can pick one level two and one level one. It's basically the, the total of your order. So let's say if your order was 200, you have a couple of options. You could do four level one, you could do two level one and one level two. Quick clarification, level one is free with 50, level two is free with 100. Or alternatively, a third alternative is two level two because those would add up to 200. Hopefully that clarifies for you, Michelle. Cindy, yes, we were able to. Um, my understanding is that was supposed to be finished January 14th. This is Cindy's question is specific to demonstrators being able to purchase the Boho Blue Mini. Give it a try, Cindy, on a demonstrator order. They may not have turned the item number off. I know that it was still available past January 14th. They did give us 30 days, um, but it might still be available to order for demonstrators. Paula, the new products added to Celebration, you can see that in the Stampin' Up! online store. If you go to stampinup.com, there's sort of a scrolling banner at the top and the first one that you'll see says more to celebrate. If you click on that, there will be two tiles for level one and level two. And if you click on each of those tiles, you can see the additional products added. They should be the first products in the list when you check that out, okay? Oh, <laughs> did you see the question for you, Brian? Will you please change the spelling of your, <laughs> my favorite name so I won't keep misspelling it. <laughs> Too funny. Uh, do I have the instructions on how to get to the pre-order numbers? I've been trying most of the day. So Nancy Lee, Nancy Lee is a demonstrator on my team. Nancy Lee, I sent an email to the team today with a link to the flyer. Um, the PDF flyer for the online exclusives, which is available for demonstrator pre-order or to add to a starter kit right now, that will have item numbers for you, okay? If you still can't find it, shoot me an email at support at thepaperpixie.com. Let's see. I have done that a couple times, Gina, cut the Velcro dots in half. Definitely you can do it with the 5 eighths of an inch ones that I typically use because they're bigger. Um, I think if you have the 3 eighths of an inch ones, the ha cutting those in half would be a little too small. But yeah, absolutely. Um, cut them in half and make them last longer. You get 75 of them in a package. So if you cut them in half, you get 150. Great idea. Yes, Ramona, the frog dies that were an add-on for the paper pumpkin kit, as I understand it, is sold out. They were very, very popular. So um, the lesson there is if you love it, grab it while you can. I think we learned that with the clover punch. Um, that was the, the punch I demonstrated last week, and it is sold out and will not be restocked. So um, same with the, the dies, the add-on for paper pumpkin, unfortunately. Any idea when we can purchase the Boho Blue version of the mini cut in a boss without becoming a demonstrator? I don't believe there are plans for Stampin' Up! to offer that for purchase. However, if there is excess stock or they have more, we may see that as an option to purchase. So stay tuned. The uh, starter kit promotion ends on February 28th. So I would say hang tight till after that point and maybe we'll see it in the online store. Who knows? 
Uh, oh, I saw your message ahead of time, Christine. I was still uh, planning or prepping for tonight. So um, I think if I remember, I didn't read the whole message, but your um, the lock on your punch popped out. I think I should be able to find a video tutorial for you that shows you how to put the lock back in. Um, now, if you have a punch that is not punching or it's giving you problems, this is not... Um, if you do these things, you may affect the warranty on the punch, but it's worth trying, okay? So if your punch is sticking, there's like three things that I would suggest that you try. One is putting it in the freezer. Sometimes the cold will contract the punch and then um, free up whatever's sticking. Um, you can also try punching it with your foot. I know that sounds really weird, but sometimes your foot is stronger than your hands. So you could put it on a flat surface on the ground and try to step on it with your foot. Again, this would probably affect the warranty, but things to try. And these are actually things that Stampin' Up! suggests when customers have issues with punches. And then the third thing, <laughs> this is going to sound crazy, drop it on a carpeted floor. Let's sometimes dropping it uh, frees up whatever is stuck and it gets working again. And if you try those things and they don't work, then it's probably, um, there is, uh, there is a great video tutorial out there. Uh, a demonstrator's husband, I believe, showed how to take the punch apart and inspect it and then put it back together. You could always go to that if you're handy with a screwdriver. Um, and, uh, what's the spray you would use? WD-40. WD-40, thank you. Um, you might, that could be something you could try as well. So, and this would be, I think in your scenario, the punch is the two and a half inch circle punch, which is no longer carried by Stampin' Up. So the lock itself, there is a way to get that back in, but the lock has to go in a certain way. It doesn't fit both ways. It's got to go a certain way. So I will see if I can help you with that. All right. Do I have any, uh, do I have any recommendations for sharpening the blade on the paper trimmer? Honestly, my biggest suggestion for that would be to buy the replacement trimmer blades, um, assuming you have the new paper trimmer, Christina. Um, but another thing you can try is a, I don't have it handy right here, a rolled up ball of um, tin foil or aluminum foil. You could try that and then kind of stab the ball, the... <laughs> Stab the aluminum. I can't imagine what the closed captioning sounds like tonight. Stab the ball with the um, blade itself. Sometimes that gets off any gunk. Um, can sharpen the blades a little bit as well. That's one of the things I recommend for sharpening the blades on the um, scan and cut as well. So try the aluminum foil ball. Um, I think you could potentially try something like sandpaper. Um, but I honestly, if you can get replacement blades, that would be the way to go. But you could try the tin foil thing as well and see if that helps. Let's see. I'm going to pop this one up even though it's not technically a question just to answer this one. Um, this is again referring to the online exclusives that's been in the chatter a little bit tonight. Again, this is something new that Stampin' Up! is offering. We're in the midst of pre-order right now, but items can be added to a starter kit. But we got a flyer today, demonstrators, and there's a QR code on it. That QR code will not work until March 1st when the online exclusives are available for customers. So let's see. Oh, I just have to pop this up because I love the nickname Squeezers, the reverse tweezers. I love it. If someone signs up under you, do they use a host code and how do we get one? So no, they do not, Yvette. If they're going to be um, purchasing a starter kit and joining your team, it does not need a host code. You have the host code option if that person who wants to join has held a workshop and they're wanting to take the stamp and rewards that they earn on the workshop and put that towards a starter kit. So that's why you see sort of the host code question in the starter kit screens. But as far as someone signing up under you, no, they would not use the host code unless they were carry, carrying stamp and rewards over, okay? But I can show on the next team meeting, um, again, how to do, to set up a host code if you want to set up one, but it's not needed for <coughs> the starter kit for someone to join your team. Let's see. Oh, Helen, hopefully somebody got your question. Did the people answer Helen's question? She forgot to put the cue. Yeah. I'll go back and... Yeah, she did. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> 
Oh, Cheryl, you're hilarious. <laughs> you have the reverse tweezers on your favorites page, but I was not able to find your belly on your favorites page. After all, you use it as a third hand. Isn't that funny that's not on my favorites page? <laughs> oh, that's good. When will the bouquet bundle be available again? The bouquet, the bouquet. Oh, are you, is it the fitting florets, Patricia, that you're asking about? If that's the case, um, I don't remember the date off the top of my head. I'm totally guessing. I want to say it was a February date for fitting florets, that bundle. Um, I think that's the one you're asking about. It is coming back. I just can't remember the um, estimated availability date off the top of my head. If that's not the one, if you'll put a cue and clarify which one for me. Oh, country bouquet. Um, thank you. <laughs> I, I didn't think that sounded right. Country bouquet will be April 17th, I believe, is the estimated date. You can get the stamp set, the country bouquet stamp set. That's still in stock. It's the country bouquet punch that has sold out. They are restocking it, and I believe the date is April 17th. Okay. Great question, Carol. Can we change uplines after signing up? Um, technically, yes and no. So um, the way that that works is if you do want to join a different team, you would need to drop. And then um, depending on this is there's a caveat here. So um, there's two different scenarios. One is if the person you directly signed up with is still active, you have a 90 day wait before you can join another team leader. If your direct team leader has dropped and you've sort of rolled up to either the next person above you or the next person above that person, then technically you can drop or resign and sign right back up with another team leader. So it is dependent on um, if you're, the person you signed up with is still active or not. If they're active, it's a 90 day wait. If they're not active, there is no wait. However, you will be starting over brand new as a demonstrator. So you're gonna get a new demonstrator ID your um, year-to-date sales and tenure, all of that sets back to zero if you do that. So it's, it's a big decision to make for sure. All right, uh, let's see. I think it will drive me nuts not being able to find it. What were the frog dyes that were previously mentioned? Oh, so um, Michelle, they are, um, it was a paper pumpkin add-on that was listed under the uh, paper pumpkin past kits and refills. If you look at the paper pumpkin, uh, remind me, Michelle, I think you're still active on my team. <laughs> on the demonstrator site, if you go to current promotions happening now and look at the tile for the current paper pumpkin kit, you can see more information about those dies. But it was just two dies. I wanna say they were $6, but they cut out a frog and a flower, I think. It was just two dies that went with the paper pumpkin kit and they were only available for active paper pumpkin subscribers, but they were so popular they sold out, so. All right, we are at the end of the questions. Let me go ahead and come on next. If you enjoyed tonight's tips or tricks, be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification icon to set for all notifications so you don't miss my next video. I do have a quick announcement to make. So I am offering um, an adhesive kit exclusive to the Paper Pixie. So here is what that kit looks like. And actually, let me come on in and do a demo really quickly and show you. So they come in this custom cotton pouch, sort of launching my new logo, which I'm obsessed with. She's so cute, my little pixie. All you need are stamps, ink, and a little paper pixie. And of course I had to add my, um, my paper pixie ribbon pool, also known as the Vera Bradley ribbon pull. So if you are interested in purchasing the starter kit, or not the starter kit, the adhesive kit, you just want to go to thepaperpixie.com slash adhesive. It is $40 plus shipping and included in it are five adhesives. That would be the multi-purpose liquid glue, tear and tape, dimensionals, um, stamp and seal plus, because that's my favorite of the two. Uh... Tear and tape, hold on, I'm looking. We've got tear and tape, stamp and dimensionals, stamp and seal plus, multi-purpose liquid glue, and mini glue dots. And there's a free gift in there. It is the silicone craft mat. All of that fits in that. I have them ready to ship 
Um, again, the paperpixie.com slash adhesive. My customers and team members got first dibs today. They got notified first. I still have some left. It is limited quantity, but I, again, ready to ship. So um, I hope you can get your hands on it for sure. It's super fun. Everybody needs a little bit of adhesive and a cute little bag to include it in. So thanks again for joining me tonight. I, again, will post the project sheets. Um, Thursday or Friday for all three Easter Bunny projects. I will be live again next week for episode 272 next Wednesday, February 8th at 8 o'clock p.m. As always, if you have any questions between now and then, the best way to reach me is support at thepaperpixie.com. I hope you have a wonderful and blessed week, and I will see you next Wednesday. Take good care. Bye. 